This video will cover the topic Linear Factors Theorem and Conjugate Zeros Theorem. Before we begin solving a problem that involves these two theorems, it is very important to know what these theorems mean. The Conjugate Zeros Theorem states that if a complex number in the form a plus bi is a zero of a polynomial where a and b are real numbers, then the complex conjugate of that number which is a minus bi, is also a zero of the polynomial. This implies that the number of complex zeros a polynomial will have will always be even. Okay, so what does the linear factors theorem mean? Is this theorem related to complex zeros as well? This theorem is not related only to complex zeros. In fact, it is related to both real and complex zeros. The linear factors theorem states that any polynomial in this form of degree n, where n is greater than zero, can be written as a product of its leading coefficient and linear factors as follows. p of x is equal to a sub n times x minus r sub 1 times x minus r sub 2 all the way up to x minus r sub n. The constants r sub 1, r sub 2, to r sub n are the zeros of p of x, and these zeros can either be real or non-real, and they don't necessarily need to be distinct. Thus, any polynomial of degree n greater than 0 has exactly n zeros. This is a lot to take in at one time, so let's try an example so that way we can see a little more clearly how we can use these two theorems to solve problems. Suppose that r of x is a polynomial of degree 12 whose coefficients are real numbers. Also, suppose that r of x has the following zeros, 2 plus 3i and negative 6 with multiplicity of 3. Answer the following. Find another zero of r of x what is the maximum number of real zeros that r of x can have, and what is the maximum number of non-real zeros that r of x can have. I don't think I really understand how we can use the theorems we just talked about to solve this kind of problem. Well, let's break this down. We are given two zeros, though since negative 6 has a multiplicity of 3, this zero occurs three times. So this adds up to four zeros total. However, since the polynomial has a degree of 12, there are 12 minus four zeros that aren't given to us, which means that there are eight zeros that we don't know. We can find one of these unknown zeros by using the conjugate zeros theorem. Would one of the zeros be two minus three i, since this is the complex conjugate of two plus three i? Exactly. That's right. So now, let's try to find the maximum number of real zeros that the polynomial could have. We know so far that there are at least three real zeros, which have a value of negative six. We also know that there are at least two complex zeros, which are two plus three i and two minus three i. All the remaining zeros could either be real or complex. So, the maximum number of possible real zeros is 12 minus 2, which is equal to 10, since the total number of zeros is 12. Hmm, okay, I suppose that makes sense. So would the maximum number of complex zeros be 12 minus 3 equals 9? This is very close to the correct answer but not quite. By the conjugate zeros theorem, there must be an even amount of complex zeros. So the maximum number of complex zeros would actually be eight. Oh, okay, so we first determine the complex conjugates of the complex zeros given to us, assuming they are not also given. Then, using the degree of the polynomial, as well as the known numbers of real and complex zeros, we find the maximum number of possible real and complex zeros, right? That's exactly right. Good job.